The James Bond franchise is such a monumental cinematic empire that it doesn't really seem like there's room for anyone at any level of production to make demands about anything. A Bond film is such a gargantuan undertaking that cast and crew members alike are basically just swept up along for the ride after signing on. However, some actors have still daringly hedged their bets and made some rather unexpected requests over the years. So with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are the 10 most unusual demands made by James Bond actors. Number 10, not playing a religious terrorist, Rami Malek. Rami Malek played the vengeful terrorist Lucifer Safin in the most recent No Time to Die, though the Oscar-winning actor insisted upon one aspect of his character's motivations during negotiations for the role. Before he signed on the dotted line, Malik asked for assurances from writer-director Kerry Fukunaga that Safin wouldn't be a religiously inclined extremist nor speak in an Arab language. Malik, the son of Egyptian immigrant parents, has made a great concerted effort in recent years to turn down parts where he would portray a terrorist with real-world convictions, feeling that it plays into unfortunate Hollywood stereotypes. He said in an interview with the Daily Mirror, quote, That was one thing I discussed with Kerry. I said, we cannot identify him with any act of terrorism terrorism reflecting an ideology or a religion. That's not something I would entertain, so if that is why I am your choice, then you can count me out. But that was clearly not his vision, so he's a very different kind of terrorist." End quote. Hollywood being Hollywood, it's certainly a reasonable ask, and with No Time to Die being easily the most forward-thinking Bond film to date, Fukunaga duly complied with Malik's request. Number 9. 10% of Goldfinger's box office earnings, Gert Fruber. Gert Fruber gave an iconic, unforgettable performance in Goldfinger as the titular villain, though the producers were initially hoping that the great Orson Welles might take the part to no avail. Despite being nowhere near as high profile an actor as Welles, Fruber decided to shoot his shot and make a frankly ridiculous ask of Bond producers. Fruber's salary negotiations went back and forth, with the actor eventually insisting that he be paid 10% of the movie's box office earnings. With Goldfinger raking in $125 million worldwide, that would have amounted to a tidy $12.5 million to take home. Given that even star Sean Connery, though, reportedly earned just $500,000 for his turn as Bond, it was naturally an absurd request and one which was flatly turned down. Fruber's ultimate salary has never been publicly disclosed, though one suspects that this was very much a case of the actor adhering to the business principle of don't ask, don't tell, or as we say it up here, shy Ben getting out. And I mean, hell, it was worth a try despite being an astronomical long shot, right? Number 8. To keep the Aston Martin vanquish, Pierce Brosnan The Pierce Brosnan era of Bond is where the salaries for 007 actors truly began to skyrocket, with Brosnan being paid a stonking $16.5 million for Die Another Day, his final outing in the franchise. Yet because that apparently wasn't enough, Brosnan also requested that he get to keep the gorgeous custom-made Aston Martin vanquish, which Bond drove throughout the film. When Brosnan was informed that he wouldn't in fact get to keep the car, he decided to play a devil hand on the literal eve of the film's press tour. The day before the press was set to begin, Brosnan declared that he wouldn't go anywhere near the Vanquish unless it was guaranteed in writing that he'd get to take it home once his duties promoting the film were completed. Because the value of having James Bond being photographed with the car was so huge, Aston Martin begrudgingly relented, with the Vanquish eventually being delivered to Brosnan's Malibu home. Sadly, however, there is a tragic epilogue to this, as the Vanquish was destroyed when Brosnan's home suffered extensive fire damage in 2015, leaving behind only two of the car's plaques bearing the actor's name and a handful of screws. Number 7. To be looked after by the cast and crew, Jane Seymour Jane Seymour rose to instant international fame after playing Bond Girl Solitaire in Live and Let Die. Though being just 21 years of age at the time of shooting, it's understandable that she was a little anxious about starring in such a massive production. And so Seymour, then being married to Michael Attenborough, son of legendary filmmaker actor Richard, arrived on the film set with a note from her famous father-in-law asking the cast and crew to take special care to look after her. The note reportedly said, quote, She may well need a shoulder to lean on. Unfortunately, most reports suggest the experience was a tough one for Seymour, as Roger Moore famously made her cry by playing a practical joke in which the cast all got up and walked away when she sat down to join them for a meal. Elsewhere, she and Moore both called dysentery and were involved in a car accident, and Seymour was left terrified when one of these snakes during the voodoo ceremony sequence accidentally got loose and almost bit her. You never know Seymour's anxiety from her final performance at least, and she has spoken more favourably of Moore in recent years. 
Number six, $225 million in damages for unpaid residuals, Sean Connery. Sean Connery may have earned a mere $16,000 for playing James Bond in his inaugural big screen outing Dr. No, but by the time he reprised his role for the last time with 1983's non-Eon film Never Say Never Again, he made at least $3 million and took an alleged 15% of the box office, amounting to roughly $24 million. Despite this colossal payday though, the very next year Connery launched a lawsuit against MGM and legendary Bond producer Cubby Broccoli, alleging that various box office royalties and merchandising payments had been withheld from him for his work on the franchise. Connery sued for an eye-watering $225 million, and though the full outcome has never been revealed, presumably tied up in a non-disclosure agreement somewhere, it was reported that 12 of the counts in Connery's suit were dismissed by a judge. Mega producer Broccoli, for his part, said he was, quote, shocked and distressed by Connery's claims. Number 5. Co-star billing with Sean Connery, Jack Lord. Jack Lord was the first actor to portray the great CIA agent Felix Leiter, appearing in Dr. No and working with Bond while he's in Kingston. Lord was invited back to reprise his role in the third Bond film, Goldfinger, though evidently appreciating the success of the first two movies made some high-flying demands. According to Richard Maybaum, who wrote both Dr. No and Goldfinger, Lord made three over-the-odds requests, a larger role in the film, a bigger salary, and, most of all, a co-star billing opposite Sean Connery. It appeared that Lord wanted Felix to be 007's equal, which clearly wasn't how the producers and filmmakers saw the character, and so Lord was eventually dismissed. And this began a game of hot potato around the role, with four actors playing Felix for a single film apiece until David Hedison portrayed him in two films, Live and Let Die and License to Kill. And I mean, hey, you can't really blame Lord for trying to elevate a fan-favorite supporting character, though given that he was still very much a rising actor at the time, it was a few years before he properly broke out on Hawaii Five-0, he had virtually no leverage to affect this change. Number four, a second audition, Leah Sadu. Leah Sadu played Madeline Swan in Spectre and No Time to Die, though she very nearly ended up forfeiting the role after her initial audition didn't go so well. By her own admission, the actress performed the first audition after drinking a beer to calm her nerves, which resulted in it turning out a little sloppy and a little tipsy. And while having no bargaining power to do so, especially as a relatively unknown actress in Hollywood at the time, Sadu nevertheless asked if she could audition again and effectively get a do-over. The producers thankfully complied and Sadu returned for a far more successful second audition in front of director Sam Mendes, which evidently won her the gig. In her own words, she said, quote, The problem is that I had a beer before the audition, which was a very bad idea. So I was a bit tipsy. I did the audition and it was terrible. I was terrible. So I asked if I could do it again and then I met Sam and that's how it happened, end quote. Given the high pressure, takes no prisoners nature of the auditions process for huge movies, this was clearly a bold ask but thankfully it paid off exceptionally well for everyone involved. Number three, a body double for running scenes, Roger Moore. While there's a consensus amongst Bond fans and critics that Roger Moore probably starred in at least one Bond film too many, ever since his debut in Live and Let Die, the actor has requested some unexpected assistance from a body double. Beyond the obvious and understandable use of stunt doubles, Moore allegedly felt that he looked awkward when running on screen, and so mandated that a body double be used for any scene in any of his seven Bond films where he was required to run. On one hand, this feels rather like an actor overstating their own neuroses, but on the other, it would be interesting to see just how weird Moo's run actually was. The use of a body double clearly didn't harm the movies any, considering how few are even aware of this fact, but if any Bond era could have gotten away with a 007 who ran a bit silly, it was probably Moo's anywhere. Number two, hiring Phoebe Waller-Bridge to co-write No Time to Die, Daniel Craig. One of the most interesting hires during No Time to Die's production was the fantastic Fleabag creator Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who was brought on board shortly before shooting to polish the script. In addition to punching up the dialogue, fleshing out the characters, and adding in some humor, it was later revealed that Waller-Bridge also helped reshape aspects of the plot. Her addition to the writing team, joining director Kerry Fukunaga and veteran Bond writers Neil Purvis and Robert Wade, was eventually at the behest of Daniel Craig himself. While it's generally expected that Bond actors are more or less just along for the ride where each movie story is concerned, Craig was the one who firmly recommended that Wallerbridge join the writing team late in pre-production. Though there was a lot of pre-release chatter about her being brought aboard to give the film a more feminist edge, Craig reported that he requested her involvement simply because, quote, she's a great writer. 
Number 1. Doing Her Own Horse Riding Katarina Marino In Casino Royale, Katarina Marino plays the small but memorable role of Bond's ill-fated lover Solange Dimitrios. And beyond her late-night fling with 007, you might best remember the scene where Solange rides a horse along the beach. Marino experienced leg pain while filming the sequence to the extent, though, that director Martin Campbell actually considered in bringing a stunt performer to do it for her. But the actress refused a double, insisting that she perform it herself as it would be her big Bond girl moment. And that it certainly was. Though the story does get a little weirder when you consider that an accident with a horse very nearly cost the actress the part entirely. The day before Marino was set to audition, she actually fell off a horse and broke a rib, yet soldiered on and attended the audition while under medical sedation and scarcely able to walk. Despite this, she was invited back for a second audition with Campbell and being in better health this time ended up winning the role. Given that absolutely nobody would have cared if she used a double for the scene, it's an admirable commitment to the part, if also unnecessarily risky given her prior accident. Still, she knew this was going to be a big moment and she didn't want anyone else getting the limelight and I can respect that big time. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Did you know about any of these Bond requests and are there any interesting ones I missed off here? While you're down there as well, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.